today we'll talk about what a JSON Web Token is and how it works. So let's get coding. If you arrived at this video, you're probably no stranger to the concept of authentication and authorization, but in summary, authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or a process. What this means is that there are certain rules and policies in place to prevent unauthenticated users from accessing certain pages or even data. Let's take an e-commerce website, for example, such as Amazon. So you're able to uh, access that website and uh, to see a list of uh, products or at least the product that you're looking for. Uh, in a list you're able to sort through it um, and you're able to see prices and uh, more details about the product and reviews about it however what you're not able to see uh, is a seller's dashboard with the revenues and profits that uh, the seller has made and that is due to authentication if you were to be a seller and you were to be authenticated then you would have had access to the seller's dashboard failing that you don't have access to it but you're authenticated on amazon say and you don't have access to any seller's dashboard and you might ask yourself well i'm logged in why can't i see any seller's dashboard well that's because of authorization authorization is the process of giving access to specific resources based on certain rules or policies if we take our example when you go on amazon and you register you register as a buyer therefore the application assigns you a security role of a buyer if you register as a seller you guessed it you get assigned a role of seller so this is how the application knows the two different types of users now that we understand these two very important concepts authentication and authorization we are now ready to talk about json web token and according to jwt.io a json web token is an industry standard rfc 7519 method for representing claims between two different parties securely and i'll explain what that means in a moment a token as such is made of three main components a header a payload and a signature and let's talk about each one of them in particular so the header holds two things the type of token identified with typ notation and the signing algorithm used under the alg notation in this case the type of algorithm is jwt and the alg is the uh, sha256 uh, or as you see here hs256 uh, the payload holds claims and claims are just pieces of information describing the subject right there are three, three types of claims registered public and private Let's talk about them individually very briefly. Registered claims are three characters long and are not mandatory, but recommended. Some examples are ISS, issuer, EXP, obviously the token expiration time, and SUB, subject, or AUD, you'll see more often, uh, meaning audience. Uh, so that's registered claims, public claims. Uh, these are custom claims that we can define ourselves. Be careful to avoid collisions, however, with the private or registered ones, and I'll link you up with the full list of um, registered claims in the description. And last but not least, the private claims created to share information between parties that agree on using them. Some examples are uh, the user security role or the user ID. Um, so the third component of a JSON web token is the signature, which is used to verify the message uh, that the message wasn't tampered with along the way and it holds three pieces of data the encoded header and the payload and the secret key if this video is helpful to you so far why not hit that like button so that this video can spread to as many people as possible i would really appreciate it and i do weekly tutorials and discussions such as this one so if you're into this kind of content consider subscribing now that we understand what authentication means what um, authorization is and uh, what a json web token is and the, uh, the three main components of it uh, let's switch over to a diagram that i've got for you uh, and let's explain how uh, jwt actually works okay so here we are and on the left hand side we've got the uh, client and this is the user that goes on say amazon and um, we have uh, here what i wanted it to be a uh, web page and uh, this represents the browser and then on the on the right hand side we have the server uh, which is a place that uh, users can clients can access uh, data through so that could be uh, an api say for our example Okay, so the very first thing for a uh, user, for the client, is to 
login. So the client attempts, the user attempts to log in. So what the server does is uh, the point of logging in, obviously it logs the user in if the user is uh, registered in the system and it issues a uh, JWT at that specific point. So when the user logs in. So here we've got the JWT, the JSON web token. This uh, token contains all the information that we've talked about uh, uh, previously. Um, and uh, this is issued on the server side and is sent to the client um, with the response back from the from the login request. Yeah, and then the client stores this in the browser. So this JWT is stored in uh, more often than not in a in a cookie in a session cookie inside the browser, be it Chrome, Firefox, you name it. And then the uh, next thing that the uh, client wants to do say is um, search for a product search for hair products on Amazon. So that means that the client sends a request to the server and the server when the very next request uh, that comes to the server from the client, um, the server validates that JWT because uh, the JWT token is also sent along with the request. So say the user searches for uh, hair products in the search bar, this JWT goes along with the data that the uh, user uh, requested. And at that point, the server can take this JWT and validate it. And if it's valid, then the server responds back with a 200. If it's not valid, then the uh, server responds back with uh, um, unauthenticated, with a not authenticated bed request. Um, and it, the uh, server does not allow the client to access uh, any resources because uh, the JWT uh, is not valid. But in our case, everything has gone smoothly. The token has been validated because it's just been issued and it's not expired yet. So everything is okay. Okay, so this is in short what JSON Web Token is, why it's important and how it works. Keep an eye out for a video that I will be publishing very shortly to show you how you can add authentication and authorization to your SP.NET Core web API with JSON Web Token. Matter of fact, check it out on screen right now if it is available already. Until next time, stay safe.